For this chapter, open the example project number 11, Real or Virtual MIDI. You may have noticed that there are two types of MIDI tracks in Cubase. One is instrument and the other is MIDI. If you're using a traditional keyboard or synthesizer with sounds built into it and want to use those sounds, you would use a MIDI track. If you want to use a virtual instrument like a software synthesizer, you would use an instrument track. There are a couple differences between these two tracks. MIDI tracks only contain MIDI data and therefore have no sound. So the first thing you'll notice is that a MIDI track doesn't have inserts, equalizers, or sends. These are all audio related and are only found on tracks where audio travels through them. There are a few other differences to point out. An instrument track sends its output to a virtual synthesizer or a soft synth. You can only pick a virtual synth here. On a MIDI track, you can choose its MIDI output. There's a bit of an exception here, however. MIDI tracks came first, before instrument tracks and virtual synths. So all you had were MIDI inputs and outputs. Then programs like Cubase added virtual synths. You had to take many steps to make them work. First, you would call up the VST Instruments panel from the Devices menu. This is also referred to as the VSTI rack. Second, you would choose your virtual synth. Let's choose Cancel for now since I want to show you all the steps here. Let's pick a sound. By the way, if you're unfamiliar with the all-new Halion Sonic SE, don't worry, we're covering it fully in Level 4. And finally, third, you would then create a MIDI track, which I already have, and then assign its output to a virtual synth. That's a lot of steps, and there's one more track eating up space on your mixer. Not very efficient. Plus, the MIDI track really has no control over the EQ and effects for the virtual instrument. You would need to set these in the mixer. Although this method is still a valid way of creating MIDI tracks with virtual synths, there's an easier, more connected way to accomplish this. This is where instrument tracks come in. Instrument tracks have the virtual synth attached to the MIDI track in one great combo pack. This makes it easier to manage your tracks, and now you don't have to remember the extra signal path information. It may not seem like much right now, but imagine having 10 instruments open. That's 10 extra unnecessary channels on your mixer. When you add an instrument track, you get to pick the synth right from the start. You will notice that when you have an instrument track, you don't get things like the bank and program selectors. Nor do you have any MIDI channels. This means that instrument tracks can only have a single stereo output. If you have a multi-timbral virtual synth with two or more MIDI channels, meaning it can play two or more different sounds at a time, Using an instrument track won't allow you to play the other MIDI channels. So now you see why I bothered to show you the, let's say, old-fashioned way of doing it. On the flip side, there are good reasons to use instrument tracks. Instrument tracks allow for much easier handling of VST instruments, because one track corresponds to one channel in the mixer, which corresponds to one VST instrument. The VST instrument is set up automatically with the instrument track and all automation parameters are available directly in the instrument track. This way, you can move VST instrument automation curves together with the MIDI data. The nice thing about both of these tracks is that you can move the MIDI data back and forth between them. So if you start off with an instrument track and for some reason need to switch to a MIDI track, no problem. In the next chapter, we record with an instrument track, which is basically the same procedure as recording on a MIDI track. Now let's record some MIDI. Before we start, make sure you watch the video on MIDI setup. You'll want to make sure your MIDI ports are active and set up the way you want them. Open project number 12, MIDI recording. We're going to create an instrument track instead of a MIDI track. A MIDI track is useful if you're using an outside MIDI source like a keyboard or a synth module. 
we're actually going to use a virtual instrument, so an instrument track is the best choice for us. Add an instrument track and choose Groove Agent 1 as the instrument. Don't stress if you don't know Groove Agent 1 yet. We'll be covering it fully in the next level of this tutorial series. Click on the Track Preset button. Now click here to browse the presets. Notice that if you have the Record or Monitor button on, you can addition the different sounds with your keyboard before you make a final decision. This is because Cubase preloads any patch you click on. Let's narrow down our selection here. Click Categories, Drum and Percussion, and then choose Electro Funk Kit. Then close the preset window. Rename the track Drums by double-clicking on the name field. Now, depending on how you've set up the MIDI in the device setup, you should be able to play the instrument track right away, as long as the record enable or monitor light is on. In my case, I want the controller keyboard that I have to play this instrument track. Make sure this tab is open so we can set the MIDI input for this track. I can set the MIDI input to the port that I named in the MIDI device setup video. Don't forget that I've set this input in the device setup to in all MIDI inputs, so I could just use all MIDI inputs and it would work fine. You can see that the MIDI output is set to Groove Agent 1. If you want a detailed explanation on instruments, look at the chapter called Instruments in Level 2 of this series. If you want to change the sound in Groove Agent 1 to something else, you can click here or do it right from the inspector. Clicking here will only choose presets from the virtual instrument I'm using. Clicking here will load up all the virtual instrument presets from all the virtual instruments I have installed on my computer. Having both can be confusing at first, but when you want to change the sound fast, knowing the difference really speeds your workflow up. Clicking here will apply track presets, which can feel like we're changing the preset, but we're doing so much more by applying various settings to our track. Now let's record some drums. Make sure the Record Enable button is on. Click here to go to the beginning and hit the Record button on the Transport panel. Record something in and press Stop. Now let's play it back. One problem we have is that we didn't have a click to play along with, so the recording wasn't played to any time scale, nor were any imperfections automatically corrected. For the click, press this button here. Now that we have the click on, we may want to consider a tempo. I'm going to put it at 130 beats per minute. When you try to double click on the tempo, nothing happens. This is because the tempo track is turned on. Turn it off to manually adjust the tempo. Let's also turn the pre-count button on so that we have a two bar count in. If you hold down control on the PC or command on the Mac and click on the click button, the metronome setup window opens. Pre-count bars allows you to choose how many bars will click before the recording starts to get you warmed up. Click OK to close this window. Now there's one last thing to talk about before we record. The cycle or loop. I may only want to record four bars of drums right now, and I may want it to loop over and over again until I'm done recording. Make sure cycle is turned on and manually punch in the number of bars you want to cycle or loop. I'm going to go from bar 1 to bar 5. This is actually the end of bar 4 or the very beginning of bar 5. If you look at the ruler, you can see the loop in blue. We can adjust it here instead of punching it in manually on the transport. When I press record, I'm going to play a drum beat, and since I'm a drummer, I'm going to try and do my best at playing drums on a keyboard, even though I would normally play it with drum pads. Here we go. Ouch! Not bad, but not good enough. As you can see, the recording is off time. I'm going to erase this by clicking on it and pressing the delete key. Turn on Automatic MIDI Record Quantize or Auto Cue from the transport. Now let's re-record this drum beat. 
This will place the recording on time to the beat. The quantize grid, which is discussed in the video on Snap, is set to 16th notes. This is perfect for most MIDI recording, because 9 times out of 10, most notes fall within that grid. Now let's re-record the drum beat. There. Much better. Let me give you an obvious example of what automatic quantize can do for you by simply recording hi-hats. I'm going to play the hi-hats as fast as I can. This sounds terrible going in, but wait. Now it's perfect. Let's finish it off with bass and snare. That's the basics of MIDI recording. Now let's look at VST connections, which sets us up for audio recording. After that, we'll look more at loop recording and editing. 